Greetings, crime fighters, and welcome to this World for Crit review of the DC deck building game Rebirth. This is the newest entry in the DC deck building game line. It's a standalone, but of course can be mixed with all the previous sets. If you don't know what the DC deck building game is, it's a deck building game from Cryptozoic. Pretty simple. We have a review of those and of course my ranking list of the bases and expansions. You can check that out. But basic game with using the DC universe and characters. You'll have a big card that represents the hero you're playing as, each with a unique ability. You start with a basic deck of cards, but you will buy additional cards that you can see with different abilities and typings, such as hero, equipment, what have you, in order to make your deck better and then defeat the super villains, whether they come out in the way in this game or they have the stack in the base game. Now, for those who are familiar with this, you may notice that this game has been in the works for quite some time. I think it was announced over two years ago. So we finally have it now in front of us. Yeah, and there are some significant changes to the gameplay. For someone who is very familiar with those titles, uh, you're going to find some things that will shake things up mm -hmm. here. Of course, like you said, you're still building a deck, and on your turn, you still play whatever cards you have, and you're trying to build up more power uh, in order to buy cards or take on supervillains. But obviously, the big thing you can see right away is the cards are laid out in a very different way. Uh, it's not just a simple lineup. They are, although it's still referred to as the lineup, uh, they're at different spaces and uh, every other space has one of these tiles, which is a location. They have their own abilities and uh, you have characters with little standees and on your turn, in addition to power, some cards will be generating move points. So you can use those to actually move around the board uh, one, one point of movement for each space that you move. Uh, these places have have different cards at them. When you're at a certain space, you can buy the cards that are there, or if it's a location, you can activate the ability there. Of course, also if there's a villain at the space, then you can try to fight that villain and take them on. Now, the original DC deck building game is competitive. This has a competitive mode also, but I feel like the core part of it, and definitely a big part of what's uh, new and different about it, is that it's a cooperative game. Uh, and because it's a cooperative game, like with the Crisis expansion, if you've played that, when you defeat a villain, they don't go in your deck. You're not concerned really about victory points. Uh, instead, they go off to just a separate location. And the goal of the game is to generally defeat a certain number of super villains uh, when they come out. Of course, things might change in that regard because there are different scenarios and each one is going to have different rules and we'll talk a little bit about that later. If you're in a location with a villain, they will attack you. It could have a different effect. You can use a defense card, similar to the way the other games have worked. Um, they also are going to be moving around the board, trying to reach specific locations according to the number on their card. If they make it to their location, uh, that's bad because they're going to be able to attack everybody uh, on the board, not just the people on their space. And they're also going to eventually try to cause damage to that location. You can see there's a damage token right here. Uh, if a location takes too much damage, it'll be destroyed, you'll lose access to that ability, and that can, uh, you know, have re repercussions throughout the entire campaign, so that's pretty scary. Uh, the assist keyword is also a thing that makes a comeback here, and it's very important because, again, it's cooperative, so a lot of cards have the assist keyword, so you can play them outside of your own turn, and many of them have range. So in this one, there's a much bigger focus on you might want to actually be in the same space as someone that you're playing with, or at least a couple spaces away, or know that you have enough movement to be able to reach them in time. So as we said, it is a campaign game. You actually will have these little packets here. Uh, you can see we put out uh, an example of just the first one, so not too spoilery. They'll have a little description of what's going on. They'll tell you how to set up the game on the back. They may come with secret cards that either put aside or given to other players. You'll also be able to unlock, which I sort of covered here, uh, this is a little bit farther ahead, but it's not too much of a spoiler. Side missions. So you will actually have these side quests you might be able to complete, which will either, in this case, this does some repairing, but someone maybe either add cards to your deck or some other really awesome things. So they're pretty cool, sort of. Maybe if you can do them. They are difficult, though. Now, super villains really are, just like the base game, sort of how the game starts and ends. The point of most of the rounds are to defeat five super villains in, uh, within the game. And in this game, you actually set up the deck similar to something like Pandemic, where you actually split up by five, put usually two super villains in each stack except for the first one. So they're a little nicer than Pandemic with uh, <laughs> that. And as they come out, 
they not only will do their attack because they're big bads, but they raise this track here. And depending on what the setup says, because you can add these extra little tiles here, it either replaces or adds an ability to a previous line. They'll either do things like uh, destroy everything in the lineup, you know, make villains cost more to beat, pretty bad. And once five of them are revealed, you have three rounds to beat all of, or beat up to five super villains, depending if you've actually beaten the previous four, mm -hmm. uh, before the game just ends and you lose. Now, if you lose, that's okay, because you have two total tries to try and beat the scenario. If you can't, you just move on to the next one. Uh, you actually fill it out in this fun little sheet here they have here, and they do say right here, you can photocopy of a personal use. So. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. <laughs> and you also mark the damage here, side quests, who's playing who, because you want to try to keep people together and they tell you you can score at the end. The reason why you also want to uh, keep people uh, playing the same character is you will unlock personal cards, and there's three for each player, and they're unique to the character, so that you really will start sort of customizing your deck right off the bat to play as uh, Batman, Superman, or as we chose the two Green Lanterns here because they're very connected within the story. It's not a legacy game, uh, although it's a campaign game. You can play the scenarios standalone as well, and I think it's pretty easy to, uh, you know, if, if even if you were on campaign four, uh, you could probably easily say, "Oh, let's bring in our new friend it, to join." And it we'll does just give them yes, some cards. It does and, say that you can do that. They don't suggest it, but you can. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you would you would lose too much from it, mm -hmm. and it's not, and you can of course replay it uh, so if, if you're someone who isn't crazy about the idea of you know a really super long campaign you have enough of those that are you're ripping things up and permanently making changes it's not that um, so that is nice but it has to have eight uh, scenarios and those will probably take you you know it's a decent amount of time to get through them and like I said you can replay them as well so there's some replay value there this is like the other deck building game where pretty much even though you split the deck to uh, pace out the super villains everything else is random so sometimes you could get really lucky with certain either whether they're strong cards like super strength or uh, cards that destroy which if you played any day deck building game you know that's sort of a very important concept in any of those kinds of games mm -hmm. or you can get really unlucky for example cheetah is actually a real pain if she comes out early because her attack is you have to take a card that costs two three or four in your discard pile so the one you just bought and put it back in the lineup it's it's a bit of a pain <laughs> if you don't have defenses for that so it, depending on the way things come up it can be a little bit annoying and maybe take a little bit longer to build up of course you also need the five super villains to show up too Right, yeah, it's definitely it definitely can be a challenge. It definitely, I think, is well suited to the co-op format uh, in that way. Uh, it's not going to be too easy uh, unless you just get really lucky. Maybe sometimes with what the draws come out, like you said, there's some randomness there. We should mention the competitive mode that you brought up is actually not designed to be in the campaign. You right, choose a scenario. Different. It's sort of like choosing your own scenario, and it plays. They suggest you play it like uh, where Sis first came from, confrontation, where you have teams. So two players on a team together versus two. That way the assists still work together. And the way that works is when you defeat a villain, you actually put in your team sort of victory pile. And once again, once either the game ends or five super villains are defeated, you count up victory points solely from the villains. Mm. So um, you, I mean, you have, I believe, pretty much every released edition, expansion, standalone thing from the DC deck building line mm -hmm. and all its various spin-offs mm -hmm. and things. So uh, this is a long time in the works and it obviously this, I, I feel like, I mean, Confrontation, you know, they've had some experiments here and there, but this feels to me like the biggest change up. Well, the board, it's, the fact there's a board and moving around is big. It's yeah. nice. So and what do you think? I mean, what do you think? Of, does that, do you think that they improve the game or it's just like I, a separate thing? I what? like this better than uh, confrontations. I felt like the teamwork battle against each other was just long and annoying. Mm -hmm. uh, this was a bit more fun, especially when you level, I guess, like gaining your character's signature cards and stuff felt really cool. And the side missions felt really cool, too. I think this is where they could take... Um, if there's a big story arc, I know the big one, the first one that comes to mind is uh, Dark Metal and actually design it around this system so you play through the story of Dark Metal. And I like it a bit more than Crisis because of that. But one of the things where Crisis shines is A, it's not a campaign, so you don't have to keep track and have the same people around. B, when this game goes south and you lose, yeah, the damage on the places can really stink, especially uh, some these locations are actually double-sided. They either have 
a regular ability, or as you can see down here, they have in essence a kick stack instead of instead of kicks, they have their own unique pile. I th I feel some of them are better than others. And if that location happens to get destroyed, you lose access to that, it can really sort of sting. I feel like this is kind of, to DC deck building game, what the Legendary Encounters series is mm -hmm. to Legendary. Uh, more focus on co-op, like you said, more of a kind of a campaign experience playing through things. Honestly, as someone who uh, is not nearly as big of a fan of the traditional DC deck building game as you are, um, I, for the most part, I thought that this really did uh, improve the game for me. I mean, one of... One of the biggest things that I usually am not a fan of in that game is that I feel like there aren't a ton of decisions to make. Usually you have one kind of uh, currency. I mean, I don't have as much experience with things like Crisis and stuff that you've been talking about. But with the regular game, at least, it's usually make a lot of power, buy the biggest card you can buy, and keep going until your deck is stronger. Here you've got so many different places you can go. There's different villains with different powers. And should you go to a villain to stop it from moving? Should you try to take it out? Uh, should you go to a specific location to use its ability? There's also, you know, worrying about, oh, should I get cards that have movement points versus power points versus more assists to help other players? I felt like the choices were a lot more interesting in that regard for me. There is sort of a story going on, but it's it's not exactly <laughs> right. It's not Shakespeare. It, well, I mean, more of it's, it's not, not even. It's, it's not gloomy. like I mentioned Dark Haven, like Dark Metal. It's not like following, at least from what I can tell, very obvious. Like this happens, or you learn this and this, which encounters usually has a bit more of that because it actually follows mm -hmm. a TV series. You know, this is like it's an excuse for you to have a different rule that's mm -hmm. just for fun. It's not like a. I would hope that's what I actually hope they do is they that re this does well enough that they make sort of there's the. DC deck building line, and then there's the DC deck building rebirth line, which would be more of like campaigns, and which could mix a lot easier because then you could have uh, different like dark metal storyline. Maybe you do have a Titan, Teen Titan storyline, mm -hmm. uh, Forever Evil, and those would mix a bit more. It's the same cards as before, but this have more like it have move villains with rewards and attacks on them, and hope and maybe a scenarios that have follow a much more strict storyline that reward you for feeling like side missions that make sense in a co cohesive story. Yeah, no, that could be really cool. And I think I like the cooperative nature of this because there's more discussion of, oh, you should take this card, you should take that type of card. And I think that does a lot to help. I mean, also, this is a completely new set of cards, but it, I think it feels more fair and more balanced to me that you're working together uh, in, that, in you, that way. You do get that feeling in the uh, crisis mode. Okay, yeah. But... Because the way this is a board and there's a bit more moving, because there's a lot more, not simply just, oh, I'll buy this card and this card from the lineup. It's more of, okay, I really want that super strength, but I can't reach it there. I'm like, oh, I can assist you if you go into my space. I can give you an extra movement. You're like, mm -hmm. oh, I can reach. So there's a bit more planning there, I think, which makes the cooperative element more, well, cooperative. <laughs> yeah. My biggest pr problem, I think, really still with the game is that, uh, which we experienced a fair number of times, is that sometimes uh, if the supervillains aren't coming out or even just regular villains, uh, and maybe there aren't a lot of cards on the field, sometimes on your turn, there's really just very little to do uh, and that can feel really boring when it's like there's nothing I want to buy there's nothing to fight and I'm not worrying about beating you so since we're working together so it's not like oh let me just get a card with a good victory point value so sometimes I was just sitting around like we're all right we're done next turn let's get something out of there that you probably I mean sometimes you'll have the opposite problem where it's so hectic uh, that things are uh, taking you out and your group is struggling to stay ahead of them yeah but it comes I, down to the I actually saw that more on the opposite because mm -hmm. you mentioned you can pin villains down, but sometimes you, if you let them move, you know, they're just going to ruin everyone's day. So even if you have a bunch of power, you don't have a lot of move. You're like, I have to waste this turn just staying here mm -hmm. or, or a lot of move and no power, I guess would be more sense because hopefully you defeat the villain. But the point is you can feel you lose a turn because you're, you have to do that cooperative thing, which is can be a bit of a pain because maybe you're doing it for like five turns in a row. <laughs> right. Uh, regardless, I feel like, I do feel like this game, it does enough different that I think it it earns that name Rebirth, you know? I think it's not just a cool subtitle. Like, this does feel to me like a, a cool reinvention of the deck building game. Now our crits and misses for the DC deck building game Rebirth. First, crits. 
There are several new additions and improvements to the original format of the game, giving you a new variety of interesting decisions to make on your turn. There are some old favorites returning, such as move from the Attack on Titans and assist from Confrontations, but they also added a couple new twists. Instead of a kick deck, they have the basic card, and a lot of the big hero cards are actually very different from their counterparts we've seen before in other sets, which is a breath of fresh air if you're a veteran of this kind of game. The cooperative gameplay allows players to work together in new and interesting ways using the assist keywords, uh, arranging where they are on the boards, and coming up with just in general different kinds of combos between their cards and their synergies. We've seen cooperative DC games in confrontations technically, as well as the crisis games, but because they add the board, so to speak, in this, where not only are you moving about, but your assists have a certain range, there's a bit more discussion at the table with how can people help each other? Is there a way to move closer so the the assists can be played and maybe interact with each other a bit more? I think it adds that cooperative discussion you really do want in a fully co-op game. Rebirth is a campaign game with eight different scenarios, each one adding its own new rules to spice things up. So if you're a fan of campaign games, this is a great way to fit in the DC deck building game to that format. But you can also still play it as a standalone game as well. So there's replay value and you don't have to worry about writing on anything or ripping anything up. We've played multiple games that are sort of campaign-y and deck building, but... Usually we feel like they miss a mark a little, but I feel like the way they add personal cards here is just the perfect amount of feeling that you've grown a bit without making your starting game a bit too strong. Look out! Here come the misses. This still uses a lot of the basic tenets from the original DC deck button line, which means the crits and misses from that game. Uh, the big one in particular we've noticed to watch out for is the randomness. Sometimes, depending on what villains pop out or what cards do or don't pop out, you could have a much longer game and much harder time. Depending on how those cards come out, the game can go on for a long time. It might take a long time for you to build up your deck, or you might have a built up deck, but nothing to do with it. Because this game adds locations, as well as different slots now for lineups and cards moving left or right, depending on the villains and heroes, it's a bit more complicated and kind of hard to keep track of everything, make sure you do everything in the right step order. We really do suggest this isn't your entry point into the DC line. The DC deck building line is a long running series at this point, so there's a good chance if you're watching this, I think you know whether or not this is something that you want to pick up. I think that if you've enjoyed the series before, this is probably a no-brainer that you want to take a look into this. But, I mean, what surprised me is that I am not honestly a huge fan of, of these games, I, but I found this one to be really enjoyable. I think that if even if you haven't enjoyed some of the ones in the past, uh, this is one to take a chance on. And, you know, you're, you're saying um, not a good entry point which i agree but on the other i would say if you're a more experienced gamer in general yes in general and it's not not more sort of a gateway thing and someone said hey i want to play a dc deck building game i might recommend them this one first for me well the reason why is because as we brought up we felt like the base dc game is really deck building bare bones so it's it's more closer to an, uh, an entry game and we should mention that uh, as of this recording, uh, this is before Gen Con, so if you buy this at Gen Con, you actually get a special promo called Learning the Ropes Scenario, I guess a Scenario Zero. So that way, if you want to teach people and make sure you don't feel bad for taking down to location, you can use that. I don't know how available that will be. I think it's that there's tournament kits going around uh, that may have that. I know they have a play mat which I really wish we had because that would definitely help organize this board. <laughs> yeah, that was one matter. thing. Like, I wish that, uh, like, these are locations and then there are spaces that just have cards. But if someone bought all these cards or something wiped them, sometimes I would, like, forget there's a space here yeah, or something. Yeah, something wiped them. <laughs> yeah, or this would, like, these would be too close together. <laughs> yeah. Like, so, yeah, it, it definitely could use that. A play mat that actually something has Something to spots, organize yeah. it a bit. Yeah, that'd be nice. That would definitely be nice. <laughs> it is pretty fun. I don't know yet where I put it on my list. I almost feel like, like, the Teen Titans Go expansion sort of just its whole separate beast mm-hmm. in terms of ranking and in addition especially since I haven't tr- we played through the game just through the campaign but we didn't try mixing anything because uh, it was just enough to play through eight these eight campaigns will take your time you know it's plenty of time there so mm-hmm. I'm curious I think I might try some of the solo mode with maybe either a other DC games as well as with the Titans one because 
that actually has move. So I'm really excited to see how that works out. That might that might be the one if you want to mix things around with. That's the one you add in. You can let us know if you're excited for Rebirth to finally be coming out. Uh, if you're not that interested in this in these deck building game, in which. Thanks for still watching. And of course, if you're planning to pick it up at Gen Con, you can let us know in the comments down below. Uh, of course, there's other places, Facebook, Instagram, the Watchtower. Mm -hmm. I'll be in the Batcave. Mm -hmm. I hang upside down there and sleep at night. <laughs> but until then, I'm Captain Will. And I'm Super Jonathan. <laughs> this has been Roll for Crit. Hey, go ahead, like and subscribe and support our Patreon for even more board game content. Support us now to hear the audio expansion, where you can hear all the other nerdy things we've been up to.